Hi, my name is Mareike Altgassen and I'm interested in understanding how people form intentions and later remember to execute these intentions or don't remember to execute these intentions. Today I would like to present you some of my work on autism. The title of my talk is How do I remember to get to my meeting on time? An introduction into prospective memory performance in autism. In everyday life, autistic individuals often have difficulties with structuring their daily routine, with managing their time and planning activities. And these difficulties may lead to impairments in the organization and structuring of activities, in the coordination and sequencing of complex activities, and um, in time management and uh, planning ahead. And these Difficulties are evident regardless of uh, their level of cognitive functioning and may be reflected in uh, difficulties to organize and manage tasks at work or in difficulties with remembering to uh, take work to school. These difficulties have been related to deficits in prospective memory, which is the ability to form intentions now and to remember to execute them after a delay. Prospective memory tasks are omnipresent in everyday life. A successful prospective memory is uh, important to live independently. Deficits in prospective memory may affect people's social relationships if birthdays or anniversaries are being forgotten they may lead to difficulties at work if deadlines are not met. And they can even pose a health hazard if the iron is not switched off after use, or if you forget your children in the car on a hot day, or if a medication is not taken as prescribed. So what is prospective memory? Prospective memory refers to the realization of delayed intentions. And all prospective memory tasks are dual tasks. Um, thus, while I'm involved in an ongoing activity, I have to remember to execute the prospective intention at the appropriate moment. And this dual task character is important because both tasks compete for my limited cognitive resources, which is highly relevant in populations with reduced cognitive resources like children, older adults or uh, different clinical groups. Prospective uh, remembering comprises multiple phases. So if you take the example that I want to remember to buy eggs in the supermarket on my way home from work. First, I have to form this intention and I have to plan when I want to, uh, to do it and I have to store this in my memory. Then I'm still at work, um, chatting to colleagues, completing tasks and then when I, when I bike back home and I pass uh, the supermarket I have to remember uh, I wanted to enter the supermarket and buy eggs. So I have to remember to initiate my uh, intended action and uh, to, uh, to execute it. So at this moment of uh, intention initiation, I have to uh, interrupt other ongoing activities like biking back uh, home and have to uh, stop and um, switch to executing my intended action. Prospective memory tasks are highly relevant in everyday life. About 50 to 80 percent of everyday memory problems um, across the lifespan are prospective memory problems. And um, yeah, as you have seen from my earlier examples, prospective memory represents a cognitive function that we all need every day. But what are the underlying mechanisms? Studies have shown that different cognitive functions underlie these different phases of prospective remembering. Intention formation mainly relies on our ability to plan. Intention retention relies on our retrospective uh, memory. And 
um, uh, then we need to monitor for the prospective memory queue in order not to miss the appropriate moment to initiate our intended action. And when this moment arises, we need to inhibit other ongoing activities that we are working on and we need to switch to the uh, intended uh, action and to finally execute it in the last phase. Thus, prospective uh, memory performance mainly relies on executive functions and retrospective memory. For both of these cognitive functions, empirical evidence indicates that children and adults with uh, autism show reduced performance as compared to non-autistic individuals. With regards to executive, executive functioning, deficits are most evident in planning and switching tasks, and memory deficits mainly occur when the task put high demands on self-initiated processing. Of crucial importance is the prospective memory cue that indicates the appropriate moment to initiate the intended action. And yeah, this cue may be the supermarket that I'm passing by on my way home from work and where I need to remember that I wanted to pop in there to buy uh, the eggs. Research on prospective memory differentiates between different types of tasks on the basis of the cue that signals the appropriate moment to initiate the intended action. For time-based prospective memory tasks, I have to remember to in initiate uh, my intention at a specific point in time. For example, I have to remember to attend a meeting at 12 o'clock. Or I have to remember to um, take the cake out of the oven after 70 minutes have passed. For event-based prospective uh, memory tasks, an external cue uh, indicates the appropriate moment to initiate the intended action. And this external cue may be uh, the mailbox that uh, I'm seeing and where I need to remember to post a letter. Prospective memory tasks are not equally difficult for different people and the demands they put on executive functions and retrospective memory may vary. The multi-process framework by McDaniel and Einstein um, postulates that characteristics of the tasks and the individual influence the extent to which executive functions are needed or are being employed to successfully perform um, the prospective memory task. For example, depending on the specific type of um, prospective memory queue and the specific uh, ongoing task, more or less strategic executive uh, control resources may be uh, needed to complete the task. For example, if the prospective memory queues that indicate the appropriate moment to initiate the intended uh, action are already part of my attentional focus when working on the ongoing task, less executive functions are needed to monitor for and detect the prospective memory queue. Similarly, if the prospective memory queue is highly salient and distinct, and uh, it will more or less automatically attract my attention, as compared to cues that blend in with the ongoing task. But I can also um, voluntarily decide to employ more executive control resources to ensure successful prospective memory performance. If a prospective memory task is very important to me and I want to make sure that I will remember to perform it on time, I will monitor more often for the prospective memory queue. For example, if I've got an important appointment like a job interview, I might check the time more often uh, to make sure that I will be there on time than when I'm yeah, just meeting with a friend. The extent to which executive control resources are needed to 
perform the prospective memory task is highly relevant for populations with reduced cognitive resources like uh, developmental populations, like children or adults, or clinical groups. One and the same task can exceed the available cognitive resources for some people, but not for others. I will now present you a couple of uh, studies in which we, or colleagues, looked at the role of executive functions on prospective memory performance in autism. The first studies that I would like to present uh, to you are yeah, standard lab-based um, prospective memory studies in which we manipulated the type of prospective memory cube. For the ongoing task, participants had to work on a visual spatial working memory task. They were presented with an array of uh, symbols and had to remember the location of each symbol. First, uh, the symbols were um, presented, then uh, they disappeared, and then they were presented again, and participants had to indicate via key press whether the symbols were at the same location as before. For the um, prospective memory task, participants had to either remember to um, press a different key whenever two minutes had passed, or they had to remember to press a different key whenever the background color turned yellow. Um, this, this manipulation between um, yeah, the time-based or event-based prospective memory task was done in two uh, separate studies, but these two studies or the populations that took part in these studies are quite comparable in their, uh, yeah, in, in their ages and uh, verbal and non-verbal abilities which is why I present them here now together. So in both studies, participants were around nine or uh, 10 years uh, old. And um, this time-based prospective memory task was considered to be uh, harder because it put higher demands on uh, participants' executive control resources. Because in the time-based task, as you remember, there's no external cue that reminds you to execute uh, the prospective memory task, but you have to keep track of the elapsing time yourself in order not to miss the target time. And participants could do this by pressing another button upon which a timer was um, yeah, quickly presented and then uh, disappeared again. The event-based prospective memory task was assumed to put lower demands on executive control resources because the, um, um, the, the, the cue, so the change in background color, uh, may more or less automatically prompt retrieval of the intended action. So, what did we find? In uh, the time-based prospective memory task, we saw that the uh, non-autistic children clearly outperformed the uh, autistic children. So the non-autistic children had more correct prospective memory responses than the autistic group. In a second step, we looked at groups' time monitoring behavior and we could see that overall the uh, autistic children monitor the time less frequently and also increased time monitoring less strategically. So um, the non-autistic group uh, almost linearly uh, increased time monitoring as the target time approach, um, really making sure that they will not miss the, the critical time window. In the event-based prospective memory tasks, both groups performed at the same level. There were no group differences. In uh, addition to asking children to work on the event-based uh, prospective memory task, we had asked parents to fill in a, a questionnaire about their children's um, difficulties with everyday executive um, function tasks. And uh, this um, parent rating indicated 
more everyday uh, uh, difficulties in executive functioning in the autistic children than in the non-autistic children. And importantly, prospective memory task performance was linked to everyday difficulties. So more everyday difficulties were associated with reduced prospective memory task performance. In the second study that I would like to present to you, we took a more naturalistic approach and we asked participants to actually prepare breakfast. In this study, 25 autistic adults and 25 non-autistic adults participated. And for the ongoing task, participants were asked to prepare breakfast, so to, uh, to set uh, the table, uh, to put a tablecloth on the, on the table, bring all the, uh, the plates, the cutlery and uh, yeah, uh, the food on, uh, on the table. And in this um, ongoing task, four um, prospective memory tasks were embedded two event-based prospective memory tasks and two time-based prospective memory tasks. For the event-based prospective memory task, participants had to remember to take the eggs out of the egg cooker when uh, it uh, beeped and they had to remember to switch the kettle off when its color changed from blue to red. For the time-based prospective memory task, participants had to remember to put the butter on the table at a specific time and they had to remember to take the tea bag out of uh, the pot uh, after a certain time had elapsed. Um, before participants actually worked on the task, they um, yeah, were asked to yeah, try uh, uh, everything and uh, then they had to form a plan on how they intend to perform the task. Yeah, what did we find? In this study, we found um, reduced performance of the autistic group in both prospective memory tasks. So the autistic group had less correct event-based and less correct time-based um, prospective memory hits. Overall, the autistic group showed reduced task uh, performance also, also in general in the um, breakfast uh, preparation. They showed reduced time monitoring, similarly as we found in the, in the previous study. And when looking at the plan uh, uh, quality, we found reduced performance in the autistic group and also a, a reduced adherence to the previously formed plans. The next study that I would like to present to you was uh, conducted by Williams and colleagues. They asked 21 autistic children and 21 non-autistic children to um, complete a driving game in which they had to uh, yeah, avoid uh, obstacles. In addition to this uh, driving game, which was the ongoing task, participants had to work on um, an event-based or a time-based prospective memory task. For the event-based prospective memory task, participants had to remember to press a specific key whenever they passed a lorry. And for the time-based prospective memory task, participants had to remember to refuel the car whenever the tank, um, uh, the, the fuel level went uh, below a, a certain threshold. And to see how much fuel was remaining in the car, they could press another button and then the fuel gauge would um, quickly pop up and disappear again. So analog to a timer popping up that disappeared again. And participants could only refuel uh, the car if it was below a certain threshold. So what did they find? They found uh, uh, again, a, a, a um, reduced uh, performance of the autistic group in the time-based task, but they found spared event-based uh, prospective memory performance. So to, to sum up across uh, different studies uh, um, comprising different age groups and from different research groups, 
we very consistently observe reduced performance in time-based prospective memory tasks in autistic individuals. In contrast, findings with regard to event-based prospective memory are inconsistent. Some studies report spared performance and others report reduced performance in autistic children and adults. And this inconsistency can be found across many more studies than the ones that I have uh, presented here. So why do we find these uh, consistent time-based uh, deficits, but inconsistent regards with regards to event-based prospective memory. As uh, discussed earlier, prospective memory tasks vary in the extent to which they rely on executive functions. And the main characteristic of time-based tasks is that there is no external cue that may prompt retrieval of the intended action. And in contrast, this external cue is the defining characteristic of event-based uh, tasks and is present for all event-based uh, tasks. However, the specifics of the cue may vary between tasks. And as we um, discussed earlier, uh, uh, one major cue characteristic that may influence performance is the salience of the cue. And there is evidence that if the cue is highly salient and uh, distinct, it will more or less automatically attract my intention as compared to cues that blend in with the ongoing task. And one, one can argue that uh, the change in, in background color in the, the first study that I presented to you, or the change in the color of the, of the kettle of the breakfast task, um, so, and both of these uh, tasks were associated with uh, reduced performance in, in, um, in autism, that these uh, cues are less salient than the big lorry uh, that was used in Williams' study and where uh, no impairment was found. Therefore, in the last study that I would like to present to you uh, today, we manipulated the salience of the event-based cue. In this study, 24 autistic children and 23 non-autistic children participated. Uh, for the ongoing task, they worked on a, a picture-based categorization task. They were always presented with uh, two pictures and then had to indicate via key press whether the two pictures belong to the same category or not. And then um, we manipulated Q salience. So participants worked on three different salience uh, conditions. In the low salience uh, condition, prospective memory cues were presented in exactly the same format as the ongoing uh, items. So the um, prospective memory cues did not stand out in any way. Uh, from the ongoing task uh, items. And uh, this low salience condition is assumed to put the highest demands on uh, participants' executive control resources. Yeah, so here we assumed that participants would need to monitor more to make sure that they will actually detect the cue. And then we had two high salience uh, conditions, a high visual and a high auditory salience uh, condition. For the high visual uh, salience condition, we surrounded the um, prospective memory cues with uh, a red uh, border. And for the high auditory salience uh, condition, we um, presented a beep a few milliseconds before the um, prospective memory cue was presented. And this is the sound that uh, we presented. And the assumption was that the high salience uh, condition put lower demands on participants' executive control resources because they will more or less automatically attract participants' uh, attention. This will help participants to detect the cue and then to inhibit the ongoing task and switch to performing uh, the intended action. 
Here you can see uh, the number of correct prospective uh, memory responses and you can see that there was no significant group effect. So the autistic and non-autistic group um, performed at the same level. But we did find a significant main effect of salience. Thus overall participants showed um, superior prospective memory performance in the high salience condition both in the visual and the auditory high salience condition. And then we additionally looked at participants' response time. So how fast did they respond correctly to the um, prospective memory cues? And we can see that there's a main effect of salience, no group effect, but a significant group by salience interaction. So we can see that both groups, the autistic and the non-autistic group, showed uh, the um, longest response times in this low salience uh, condition. And both groups showed uh, the shortest response times in the high visual salience condition. And the, um, uh, only the autistic group showed um, uh, the, 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 the same level of fast responses to the uh, high auditory uh, salient cues uh, as they did to the high visual uh, salient cues, whereas the non-autistic group uh, needed slightly more time to respond to the auditory salient cues. Furthermore, we could show that prospective memory performance was related to participants' sensory sensitivity in everyday life. Thus, the often reported hypo or hypersensitivity of, of autistic individuals may represent an advantage with regards to the perception of cues. So how can we improve performance? Event-based prospective memory science suggests that more salient cues lead to better performance, thus increasing the salience of the cues may be one way of improving performance. Given the consistent deficits in time-based prospective memory, it may be helpful to convert time-based tasks into event-based tasks. So going back to the title of my talk, how do I remember to get to my meetings on time? One possibility is to simply monitor the elapsing time very frequently. This is probably never wrong, but uh, this approach may take up quite a bit of my mental resources. Another possibility that may save me at least some of the constant time checking behavior is linking my intention to something that I routinely do at a specific time. Thus, linking my time-based intention to a certain uh, event and with this converting my time-based task into an event-based task. So, for example, if I've got a meeting at one o'clock, I uh, could try not to remember this as simply, okay, I have to be there at one o'clock, but I have to leave to my meeting after I have had lunch. Or if I have to uh, take my medicine at uh, certain times, then I could try to link this taking medicine uh, to certain events that I routinely do at these times. Yeah, for example, I could uh, uh, remember to take my medicine in the morning with breakfast and then in the afternoon with uh, tea and again before going uh, to bed. And by uh, linking time-based uh, tasks to certain um, events, I can improve my uh, performance. Yeah, and with this, I would like to thank you for your at uh, attention and uh, I would like to thank all my uh, collaborators. And now I'm looking forward to uh, yeah, discussing 
uh, these topics uh, with you and uh, to answering all your questions. And if you're interested in some further reading, I have um, copied here uh, two um, meta-analyses and uh, reviews on prospective memory in autism.